Terraria bosses are often a standout of the game. You could build, or farm, or die, but mostly you're here to defeat bosses. Oh, and you can do that third thing at the same time as well. Terraria is my favorite game of all time, and, in my opinion, has some absolutely fantastic bosses. However, every game has their mayo on their peanut butter jelly sandwich with pickles. Um, and thus, some bosses find themselves lacking, to say the least. Do I find any bosses in the game bad, though? No. Yes. What? <laughs> At the very bottom of the list, we have Deerclops, the only boss in this game that I can confidently say I'd sacrifice for the Soul Stone. Oh wait, you have to love them? I've covered this boss on my channel before in a video you shouldn't watch, but I don't quite think I expressed my disdain for this beast. Two words. God damn shadow hands. Oh wait, shadow hands. Shadow hands are maybe the worst thing in this game? They spawn on you, straight up. What is this? Well actually, they spawn in front of you and you ran into them. Shut up, Neo! Go back to dodging bullets! Okay, let's make this easy to understand. Hate. Hands, applied slowness, trash drops, etc. I, I ran up idea. You know the hype you get when it's time to fight Plantera? Yeah, Gollum makes me feel whatever the polar opposite of that feeling is. If Plantera is watching your baby be born, Gollum is like watching it suddenly and violently erupt into a fireball. Actually, no. That's too exciting. It's more like watching it grow up to be a low-life loser and like my hero. He's just boring, a pushover, and wasted potential. Just so we're clear, I like King of Slime. I think he works as a tutorial boss. Unfortunately, like most tutorial bosses, he does his job and that's it. The only time he's kinda interesting is when you're playing Get Fixed While You're For The Worthy. All right, this is probably my first controversial placement, but I'm not a huge fan of Queen Bee. I don't have anything against the boss per se, it just kinda exists. She can be fun to fight sometimes, but most of the time she's just kind of a quick pushover filler boss. At least, for me, she's a filler boss. I'm not a huge fan of the bee weapons. The royal family didn't make it too far in this ranking. Like Queen Bee, I'm never in a hurry to fight her. And again, like Queen Bee, she usually feels like filler. I like the hook of dissonance, and if I'm playing Summoner the Blade Staff, but I find the boss to be a bit boring. I thought I'd like this boss more when it first came out, but it's kind of just an easy bullet hell. I think the hellishness of the bullet hell could have been exaggerated, especially in the second phase. However, she is a hard mode warm up boss, so maybe don't do that. The Destroyer, the definitive worst mech boss. I don't know about y'all, but this boss feels moderately fun half the time. And if not moderately fun, really fun? Sometimes I just really like fighting the Destroyer. My brain sees all the flying colors like, wow, that's cool. Other times, however, it's just like, cool. <laughs> okay, I think this is the part of the list where we are perfectly mid. The Lunatic Cultist is the Lunatic Cultist. I think he's cool. I think it's nice to be of a boss-sized player. What? I think it's nice that we have a boss that's player-sized. However, I will be honest, I think this boss has the most missed potential of any boss in the game. I mean, for being the penultimate boss, you'd think it'd be a bit more crazy, but really it's just a setup for the pillars. Skeletron Prime blows Skeletron. Yep. Unlike Skeletron, Prime doesn't really feel important to me. Not saying the fight isn't good, it's pretty enjoyable. It just doesn't feel like killing Prime is remotely as major as killing Skeletron. I also really like the Skeletron fight because I like late pre-hard mode movement, which, well, Prime is a hard mode boss. Another niche critique I have with Prime is him not having an attack from his skull like Skeletron's skulls when you start taking out hands. Give him some sort of projectile, please. Oh, yeah, kinda hyped this big boy up, but I don't think he makes it much further than this. This was one of the hardest placements to do between this and the next boss, but I ultimately put Skeletron lower because sometimes the easiness of this fight is just a bit much. It's overwhelming how easy it is. The crushing weight of the effortlessness is just, just, I, I don't know, I, he, he's easy, okay? Initially, the brand of Cthulhu was supposed to be a fair bit higher on the list, but then I realized, hey, He's not that good. Fun story, right? 
it's really hard for me to decide whether this one or the next one should be higher on the list. This whole list is hard for me to make. I've tried making Terraria boss tier list before, it's hard for me. Like, my favorite boss, I don't know, however I feel like at the given moment. Dang, this entry got me thinking. <gasps> Due to recent good times I've had with the Eater, he barely nudges his way past the brain. Eater's a roller coaster, if that roller coaster ended in a punji pit, but there are paramedics from nearby. Then, on the ride to the hospital, due to unfortunate speed bump placement, your ribs pop one by one like a 24 key piano, each break like a gunshot, exploding your eardrums out and all over the walls of the ambulance. It's like a bloody firecracker just went off. But, good news, you can no longer hear the bad news. The truth can be dangerous. That's kind of how I feel about the eater. Every time I think I hate him, I realize it's not all that bad. Iconic. <laughs> I think the Eye of Cthulhu works as the first real boss. King Slime is just the warm up. You don't remember your first fight with King Slime. The Eye of Cthulhu though? Oh yeah. Truly this boss may be the perfect first boss. It's not extreme, but it's scary. A giant eyeball comes rolling up on you after you're ominously told an evil presence is watching you. I think the way this boss forces itself to be known is really what makes it a standout compared to King Slime. Not only this, but the boss toys with your curiosity. Sure, he could randomly decide to roll up, but the other way the boss forces its presence is through the summoning item, which you can find stored in chest while spelunking. Reading the tooltip, the name, the achievement pop, you know things are about to go down. Okay, here's my thoughts on Duke Fisher on. If this list was purely going off the boss's fight mechanically, Duke would be in the top three. Fundamentally, he's a better boss than some of the upcoming bosses. However, this list is about how much I love everything about the boss, considered all together. And something about Duke aesthetically, I don't vie with as much as other bosses. Still a stellar design, sick as hell, just not my favorite. Well, st still a favorite. I mean, sixth place is not that bad. I really wanted the Wall of Flesh to be higher, I really did. I found a way to justify him just barely making it to the top 5, but I couldn't push him up any further. Similarly to Eye of Cthulhu, this boss really shines the first couple of times you fight it. In terms of experiences to remember, the amount of nostalgia I feel fighting the Wall of Flesh on my DS is honestly uncomfortable. Dark Lance is my go-to for him, that's <laughs> funny. However, the more I've played over the years, the less and less cinematic he feels every time. Unless I'm doing a challenge run, he's just waffing around, just being his normal waff self, but that first time is a moment to remember. The Embers is a fantastic boss. Visually and mechanically, it's nearly perfect. The fight is an endurance test done right. It doesn't feel bloated for the sake of being bloated. Yes, she's tanky, she does a lot of damage, she moves very quickly but it all feels so deliberate and thought out. This is without even mentioning Daytime Empress, the mechanic that boosts this boss up just beyond a good endurance test, but practically for the sake of the argument, the definition of an endurance test. And it's brilliant. I've gotten to the point where I've mastered this one-shot phase, and it was fun, like actually fun. A boss that one-shots you was fun. Truly amazing. The vibes, the vibes, dude. <laughs> The rock theme for this boss just elevates it beyond human comprehension. I lied, I can still see and understand it. The Guardian of the Jungle thing was done really well. I think it was such a fantastic idea to not just have another jungle boss, but specifically a jungle boss meant to accompany the upgraded hard mode jungle. This boss makes beating the mech bosses feel so good. The jungle grows restless. It's such a cool line, dude. The vines, dude. Plantera feels ominous, like she truly spans the entire jungle. And that's just the vibes department. The actual fight elevated this fight beyond human comprehension. Okay, I lied again. But I'm glad we can still comprehend this because... Oh... Alright, by far the most controversial placement of the video, the twins, taking the second place and the title of the best mech boss. Similarly to Plantera, it's the vibes, dude. I love Ren Spaz, their designs just ooze personality, just feckin' ooze it. Just look at these goofy Gaspers fighting side by side. Goofy ah uh ah -uh, rat and Gasper uh uh Spaz. I mean, you take the Eye of Cthulhu, double it, then give one a laser rifle sticking out of its cornea, and the other one a flamethrower mouth. I, 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 it's amazing. I love them.
Beating this boss for the first time was truly one of the most rewarding final bosses in any game I've played. And then they rewarded me with a flash bang holy- The atmosphere, it just feels like the world is at risk. The sky is dark, your vision gets all blurry, there's a giant eldritch horror that shoots giant death lasers at you, like that- that, wait, that's not good for the world. And the fight reflects that. It's not an easy fight, especially the first couple times you fight it. And that's good. It makes it so rewarding when it's all said and done. And then they flashbang you, oh my god! Also, just a little thing that got me so hyped the first time I fought this boss. Obviously, I like my eyeball bosses. And the true eyes were just so hype. Like, when my cursor crossed over those things for the first time, everything felt immediately worth it. Connecting the first and last bosses together like that just... Mwah. So good. And then they flashbang me. Boo. I hope you all enjoyed this filler video. I'm just trying to make some small videos to get more used to this new editor I'm using. Not to mention I'm not editing on a phone anymore. As for video contents, do I 100% agree with my own list? Um, no. I've always found Terraria boss tier list to be something I can never make. I just don't know what my favorites are. They all serve their own purpose, however, I think this list generally summarizes the gist of how I feel about these bosses, so I'm okay with where it stands as of right now. That will likely change in the future. Oh, uh, one last thing. There's gonna be a link in the description and a pinned comment to a Google form that I'm gonna use for a future video. If you wanna participate, it'd be much appreciated. 